Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In a recent video, we took a look at several different channel strips. In that video, we compared the character and the sound of each channel strip, and I also discussed why I like using channel strips and how they improve my workflow and efficiency. You may also recall me using a plugin called Rea Channel Strip that you may not have. In today's video, I'll show you how to create your own channel strip with stock plugins using effects containers in Reaper. Let's take a look. I've got a blank project and I'll start by simply adding a track. If you're new to Reaper, there's several different ways to accomplish all things. There's not necessarily a right or wrong way, it's just whatever best suits your workflow. For example, to add a new track, I can double click in the track control panel, or I can press Control T, or I can right click in the track control panel and choose insert new track. If I'd like to add several tracks, I can use any of the previous methods or I can right click the track control panel and select insert multiple tracks. At this point, I can tell Reaper how many tracks I'd like, and even give it a name that will auto-increment the number at the end of each one. For example, if I call this track and press enter, I now have 10 new tracks named track 1 through track 10. But I digress, that's totally not the purpose of this video, so I'll remove all of those and go back to adding a single track. I'd like to open a commercial channel strip plugin, so we've got something to model our own channel strip after. I'll click the effects chain plugin on track 1, and that prompts us to add an effect to track 1. Let's go for an SSL style plugin, and I'll choose BX Console SSL 4000G by Plugin Alliance. This opens the selected plugin docked inside of the effects dialog. One thing that's interesting about channel strip style plugins is the physical layout in the plugin may not necessarily represent the signal chain. For example, my input gain over here on the right side of the channel strip is actually the first thing in the signal chain. And after that, we switch over to the left hand side and go through our filters, compressor, expander or gate, and then we've got our EQ section. I've got a few other controls in here. For example, I can click this pre-dynamics button to move my equalizer stage before the compressor. None of this is necessarily relevant to what we're doing right now. However, if you're trying to model your channel strip after a commercial plugin, it's a good idea to investigate the signal chain so you can ensure that yours follows the same patterns. So to get started, I'll add an effects container to track one. Let's go to effects and add container. An effects container in Reaper is pretty much exactly what the name says. It's a container for however many effects that you'd like to put in it. So in this case, we'll be creating an effects container, tentatively called Rea Channel Strip, and placing all of the effects that make up a channel strip inside the container. When I think about a typical channel strip plugin and the example that we looked at before with the input gain section in the front and many other channel strips that I like having a drive function on the front end, let's see if we can find something that matches that same function in Reaper stock plugins. So going back to our container, instead of using the add effects dialog in the lower left, we'll use this new one that's in the center section and click add. There's a few different drive circuits that you can use in Reaper. There's saturation and we can use JS saturation. There's also Wave Shaping Distortion, we could use that. You'll notice the dialog is very similar to the saturation, and they tend to somewhat do the same thing, except the Wave Shaping Distortion is, to my ear, a lot more crunchy is the word that comes to mind. The one that I tend to favor for this application is called Nonlinear Processor, so I'll click Add, and in my filter type NON, and you should see JS Nonlinear Processor. So I'll remove JS saturation and wave shaping distortion from my signal chain. And we can take a look at this nonlinear processor and we can see that I can add saturation, fluctuation, I can change the noise floor and also the output. And the output polarity has either normal or reversed. As I increase the saturation amount, we can see these colors change, which admittedly I have no clue what that does. But I know that if I were running this on some actual sound, we could hear the difference. Let's turn off the SSL plugin and bring in some audio and take a listen to what this nonlinear processor does. I'll drag in an audio clip. And let's take a listen while adjusting the saturation and fluctuation amount. Now some of that admittedly clipped and hopefully I can get that fixed in post where it doesn't uh, damage your eardrums. But hopefully you could hear that as I increase the saturation amount it, well, it increased the saturation. The fluctuation seemed like it added a bit of that, what most would call analog goodness. I could hear some minor changes in, well, fluctuation. 
It's really hard to find the right words to describe audio, but at any rate, it does tend to add some semblance of drive similar to that that I would get through another type of channel strip. So going back to our SSL channel as the model for what we're doing, after our input gain, we've got filters. So going back into our container, let's see if we can find a high pass and low pass filter in Reaper stock plugins. So I'll go to add and let's just look for filter. So in typing the word filter into my filter, I've got JS, RBJ, high pass, low pass filters. And that gives me the same type of high pass or low pass filter just as I'd have in my SSL channel strip. I'll go ahead and undock the SSL channel so we can see both of these at the same time. Drag this over to the right. So inside of our container, we've got our drive circuit with nonlinear processor, followed by our high pass and low pass filters. And up next, we would have our compressor. The first one that comes to mind is the stock RIA comp. So let's add RIA comp. Now, if you wanted a few different flavors of compressors, you can also add those in here as well. Just for example, if you wanted, let's say, an 1176 style faster FET compressor, we can add and look for 1175. And there's JS 1175 compressor. These can be turned on and off at will, so it's totally fine to add a handful of different compressor types and just use the one that you'd like to, or both. In this case, we'll go with the stock RIA comp, but leave the JS 1175 compressor in there as well as an option, but disabled by default. Looking back at our SSL channel strip, after the compressor, we've got a gate or an expander. Now, admittedly, I'm not sure if Reaper has an expander built in, but let's take a look. Oops, if I spell it right, let's try that again. And as I search for expand, I do see there is JS auto expander, JS downward expander. Now, this purple gate expander is one that comes from Toucan. Now, if you're not familiar with Toucan plugins, check the link above. And then finally, we have an upward expander. The expander that's in this SSL channel strip is a downward expander, and if you're not familiar with an expander, the difference between an expander and a gate is the gate completely shuts off the signal if it's below a threshold, whereas the expander attenuates the signal when it's below the threshold. Either one is fine, it just depends on your application. Let's add JS downward expander, and we can also add RIA gate. So just as with our compressors, we can keep both of these in here, but use one at a time or both if you'd like. Of course, in this case, I would recommend one or the other. I'll disable the downward expander in favor of RIA gate, and I'll also move the downward expander below. The vertical order in this list represents the signal path. So after our gate and expander circuit, we've got our EQ. Once again, we've got a few different options that we can choose with the stock plugins. There's RIA EQ. And if you wanted an EQ with perhaps a different type of flavor, go to add and search for 1073 and there's RBJ 1073, which is a bit of a Neve style EQ circuit. Once again, this is a situation where you can use both. You can use one or the other. It's totally up to you and how you'd like to build your channel strip. Looking at the controls for the 1073 EQ, I've got a high pass filter, a low shelf, which can be at 35, 60, 110 or 220 Hertz, a low boost or cut, a selectable mid frequency with a booster cut for that as well, and a high shelf booster cut that's fixed at 12K. Now, if you're looking for something that's a bit more musical, I would recommend the 1073 over the RIA EQ. But if you're looking for more precise controls and near limitless bands, I would recommend the RIA EQ. Given that my objective is to work quickly when I'm using a channel strip, I think that I'll favor the 1073 because it's less choices. So I'll remove RIA EQ in this case. And as I look back at the SSL channel strip, that seems to cover most of my bases. I've got my nonlinear processor to give me a bit of an analog tube style drive. I've got my high pass and low pass filters, two styles of compressor, a gate and an expander, and my EQ. One other thing that you may like to add is somewhat of a trim plugin. So I'll go to add and search for volume and I have JS volume adjustment. I'll move that back up to the front. This by default is giving me a 6 dB boost, which I don't necessarily want, so I'll switch that to zero. And this is just so I can increase or decrease the level of the signal that's coming into the channel strip. Now that I've got everything in the channel strip that I'd like, I can rename this effects container by right-clicking and going down to Rename Effects Instance or by pressing F2. Let's call this Rhea Channel Strip. And since I've already made this before, I'll call this V2. So at this point, I can turn my entire channel strip on or off by simply deselecting the check mark in the primary list, or I can turn on or off the individual components by selecting or deselecting the check marks in the center section. I have the controls for each of the modules showing on the far right. And each of these plugins also has their own mix knob here for parallel processing. 
Now if this channel strip is something that I feel like I'd like to use regularly, I can take this a step further. I'll right click Rea Channel Strip, go to Effects Chains, and save selected effects as chain. I'll call it Rea Channel Strip, if I can spell it, V2, and save. Now if I'd ever like to recall this, it'll be listed in my effects. So let's remove the channel strip, go to Add, and let's search for Rea Channel, and here is Rea Channel Strip V2. I'll go ahead and close out of my SSL channel strip and remove it from the chain, and let's give this a test drive. I don't think I'll get a whole lot of effect out of this if I don't turn it on, so let me re-enable the plugin. And I don't think that we're going to need the gate in this case, so I'll go ahead and turn that off. I won't need the volume adjustment. And so let's just start with the nonlinear processor and see what we can do here. And there you have it. While it may not be perfect, being able to make your own channel strips or whatever combination of plugins that you'd like in one container gives you not only the flexibility of a saved effects chain, but also nested parallel processing. You can do this with Reaper stock plugins, commercial plugins, or a combination of them. Are you currently using effects containers in your projects? Is this something that you think you might use going forward? Leave a comment below and let me know if this is something that you plan to use in the future. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the buy me a coffee, I got a new candle, Patreon, or super thanks below. And while this video is not sponsored by Sweetwater, I am now a Sweetwater affiliate. I'll leave a link in the description that you can use to purchase anything that you would normally purchase from Sweetwater. You'll still pay the same price that Sweetwater has on their website, but by using the link in the description, I'll receive a percentage of that sale and that'll help the channel. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. Ooh.